WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone. A man just out of prison on a manslaughter charge is back in jail. He's accused of robbing a Sullivan bank. 51 year old Johnny Lynn Cordell is charged with theft first degree along with robbery and burglary third degree. He was arrested by Summerton, Alabama police this morning and later brought back to Lamar County. Cordell is being held in the Lamar County jail without bond. The Walker County, Alabama man was just released from prison in April. Sullivan Police Chief Rick McDaniel says Cordell walked into First National Bank just before noon Thursday. Cordell is accused of giving two tellers a note and leaving with a bag full of cash. Several agencies worked together to find Cordell in less than 24 hours. McDaniel says Summerton police were a big help in this case. More charges are possible in the investigation. Cordell also has a probation hold on him in Walker County. Monroe County deputies are looking for a man they want to question about a grand larceny investigation. Now, investigators want to talk to Corey Todd about a breaking and entering and grand larceny charge. If you know where Todd is tonight, call the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. The city of Starkville wants to expand its borders, but not everybody wants in. Our Riley Livingston talks with city leaders about how public input can make a difference. She joins us in the studio with more Riley. It's a fear many people have speaking up but being ignored. Today, Starkville City leaders want to put that concern to rest. It's been over a week since residents of University Estates voiced their concerns about a proposed annexation during a public hearing in Starkville. I think that the residents of um, University Estates made it very clear that you know our home is in, it's outside of city limits. We don't trust your city. We don't want to be a part of you. And if those homeowners had wanted to live in our city, then they would have lived within our city. We need to recognize that. Those concerns were heard loud and clear. Now it looks like the city is going to make some changes. I have just looked at areas that would be different than, or that would exclude these folks, but what makes sense for us to continue that path of growth, which is not really much different other than coming out uh, outside the Eastleigh Boulevard area and not incorporating those folks who live in the university estates. Cases like this illustrate the need for public hearings. Leaders want to hear the concerns and plan accordingly. First of all, we are servants of the people. Uh, we work for the people. This is their city hall. This is their government. Um, and they have a right to be heard. It's important for us to hear people. It's important for us to know what it is they're thinking and what their concerns are. And if you're not in favor of it, tell me why, so that we can have a dialogue about why my vision is different than your vision. Mayor Sproul is hoping that once the changes are presented at the next board meeting, the city can move forward. I'm hopeful that the board will agree to proceed with drafting an ordinance that reflects the changes that were made. or going forward with the ordinance that was um, originally approved some some measure of that hopefully with the one that with the changes that have been made the city will be hosting another public hearing on Tuesday Starkville leaders are also looking at some parking problems. IPS Group gave a presentation on parking meters today at the Board of Aldermen's work session. The company rep says that the meters could help business and restaurants. Uh, the meters would potentially eliminate the need for parking enforcement officers marking car tires. They could also generate more business. It creates turnover. When you start charging a little bit of a fee for people to park, it keeps employees from parking in spaces and staying there all day, or it keeps someone from parking and then going to another town, riding with friends. It just frees up those spaces because they're limited, and it's, it's costing them something now. So it pushes them out to the free areas and gets them out of the downtown areas. Now, today's meeting was just an information session. Downtown, Midtown, and Cotton District could be potential test areas for those meters. Time to turn things over to Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson to get a first look at our forecast tonight. Keith? 
Through our all quiet right now, we are watching some budding clouds here east of Columbus. That's the view with our Alvin insurance camera. Over here in the west Alabama, just to the south of Fayette, Alabama, we actually have a little outflow boundary right there uh, approaching Palmetto in Pickens County. And this is actually lifting back to the west and northwest, all of this activity. So there's still a chance for some showers and thunder showers as this moves back to the northwest. And whatever does slip on in here this evening over the next uh, one to two or three hours will fall apart after sunset. We are currently in the 80s, low and mid 80s across our region and there will be that chance for some rain over the next couple of hours here after nine o'clock that goes away. I'm back with your weekend forecast in just a few minutes. It's not always easy carrying a badge. There's danger and for some trust issues. But in Starkville one police officer is building a relationship with some of the city's youngest citizens. Our Cash Matt Locke is in the studio with the story of how this officer Will Simon is teaching by doing how to protect and serve. Remember the book, All I Really Need to Know, I Learned in kinder Kindergarten? All well, the very young students at Mighty Oaks Daycare are learning what it means to be a good citizen of the world from their newest friend. As soon as I come up, it's like whatever they was doing, they just stop and just come to the gate and just, hey, I want stickers, I want stickers, you know, can I see your bike, you know, what do you do, what is that? You know, and that right there is awesome to me, you know. Starkville Police Officer Will Simon drives by Mighty Oaks Child Development Center almost every day while on duty. He says the children always wave to him as he passes by, so one day he had an idea. All of y'all are now junior police officers. So the next time I came, I just blew the horn at them, and they were just so ecstatic. So one time I just came on in, and they all just met me here at the gate. And uh, we just, it just went from there. The relationship started, and they just look forward to seeing me every time I pass by. And it's a relationship that teachers at Mighty Oaks say they encourage. I don't know what made him make that decision, but it was a great one. He just decided to pull into our parking lot, and he got out, and he talked with the kids for about an hour. And they had so many questions. They were so excited. And uh, he ended up making them uh, official junior deputies and that just made their whole week. Now, Officer Simon stops by almost weekly to bring the children small gifts like drawings or stickers. You don't want me to leave? Why not? I have to go to work though. And they give something back to him in return. It kind of does something for me to let me know that, hey, my presence is meaningful. You know, our presence is more than just, you know, giving someone a ticket or something like that, you know? So just that energy that they give off to me, it lets me know that, hey, if I can continue doing something small day by day, that will make a very small and possibly a major impact on their lives. It's real big bar. Officer Simon hopes his impact will help change the public's opinion of law enforcement for future generations. What does a police officer do? They help the people that are hurting sometimes. People have stickers. They keep bad guys from... from, from Mess the same stuff. He brings us treats. They see a hero that they see on TV or movies and things like that in person. And they understand that one day they can be that if they choose to be. And Officer Simon hopes his influence doesn't stop with the children at Mighty Oaks. It's, it's not for me, it's not for any other. Um, media outlet or just to uh, type of uh, shine on myself. It's for the kids and the un, uh, unaware people or uneducated people of what we do and why we do what we do. Well, teachers at the daycare say it's important for children to feel safe when law enforcement is around. All right, summer is fun time for the young and the young at heart. We take a look at how some big kids are getting into the season. Welcome back. People in the Tupelo area had an opportunity to properly dispose of old or unwanted electronic items. Keep Tupelo Beautiful hosted an electronics recycling event at Computer Universe. People were able to drop off items like phones, computers, printers, television sets, and other unused electronic items. The organizers say this event gives people a chance to clear out broken or outdated equipment the right way. It's very important not to throw your electronics in the dump. For one, it just ends up in a landfill and it's just going to sit there. So it's very important to you to dispose of them properly and for um, them to be recycled and turn into something else. Um, you know, we have a lot of renewable use resources and we want to try to uh, preserve those as much as we can. This is the second year Keep Tupelo Beautiful has organized this electronic recycling day. 
Residents of an assisted living facility get an early start on July 4th celebrations with the Summer Bash. Magnolia Manor of Tupelo held the celebration and invited families of residents to enjoy activities such as dancing, games, food, and hey, even a water slide. It was an important opportunity for the residents to share in summertime fun with friends and family members. Magnolia Manor hosts two big events every year and one in the summer and another at Christmas. We're watching some showers and thunder showers going from east to west here across parts of uh, western Alabama, here in Pickens County, moving into parts of Lamar County. An update on that, let's look ahead at the weekend. Thanks. CBI First Alert AccuWeather Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Keith Gibson. All right, the weekend is here. You may want to find a pool because it's going to be relatively warm, about average for this time of year, though. So low 90s Saturday and Sunday, not really uh, too unusual. The heat index in the 90s here, a 30% chance for some pop-up showers and storms both Saturday and Sunday. Primarily during the daytime heating here, that's the way it's looking. And really for the next seven here, 20 to 30% coverage as far as the rainfall opportunities as we go throughout the weekend into next week. So that's where we're headed. Uh, this is a view with our Off Insurance Camera Network Columbus, Tupelo, Vernon, and Durham's Pharmacy looking to the east in Columbus and Tupelo and Vernon. You can see those budding clouds and some of those thunder showers trying to roll on in. Louisville, Mississippi, you're doing okay right now. Again, uh, not too shabby here. But we do have a little downpour just east of Millport, south of Fayette, Alabama. Uh, there's actually this outflow boundary right here, that little line. Uh, that is a little wind shift that is kicking back out ahead of the actual rain. And that's acting like a little mini cold front. And as it punches back to the west into some uh, somewhat unstable air, it's kicking up these showers and storms. So brief downpours, maybe a little bit of thunder and lightning here with this activity. It's not going to last too terribly long, and not all of us will get it. So this will probably scoot back into parts of uh, northeastern Mississippi and then fall apart this evening over the next one to three hours. All of this will tend to fizzle as we get into the evening hours. So uh, a little bit of rain potential for the next few hours, and then that goes away. Upper 60s, variably cloudy overnight, maybe a little bit of fog. Your plan for tomorrow by 10 o'clock, 83, 1 o'clock, 89, around 90 or 91 at 4. Uh, not too much activity in the morning, but during the daytime heating, as we just mentioned, there will be a better chance for some of those pop-up showers and storms. Not everyone's guaranteed a little bit of relief tomorrow, but it will be seasonably warm out there. So future cast picking up on the activity right now and notice how as we go throughout the evening that goes away and tomorrow morning if you're up early there shouldn't be any rain on radar but during the course of the afternoon heating some showers and storms around those will go away Saturday night and will likely flare up some additional showers and storms during the daytime heating on Sunday. All of next week basically the same weather pattern we will have scattered showers and storms around warm and steamy conditions and the best coverage here during the daytime heating. Here's your AccuWeather 70 forecast. Low 90s for the weekend. Low 90s next week. Basically for the next seven low 90s during the day. Low 70s at night. The Smithville Seminoles are up next on the high school football tour. The Knowles want more than division titles. Here are their plans for the upcoming season next in sports. WCDI Sports with Tom Evel is brought to you by your local Ford dealers. Go further. High school football tour rolls along with Region 2-1A. Our fifth stop checks in with the Seminoles of Smithville. The Seminoles return with more experience than the season before, hopeful that will make all the difference in 2019. 
Unexpected is the word the Smithville Seminoles used to describe the run it made in 2018. With a much younger squad last year, the Seminoles were surprised that the lack of experience didn't hold them back. Now for the upcoming season, they're setting the expectations even higher. What they did last year to step up and play hard, uh, you know, it, it really uh, surprised us a little bit. Uh, but we've got good kids that they, they just outwork everybody, and that's kind of what we did last year. So I think we all on like a revenge trip. We ready to get out there. I think we want to stay championship. We want to get past North Half because we don't been there three years. Our senior group done been there three years and haven't got past there. So we want to get there, past that this year. That younger squad has grown older. Smithville returns over 10 seniors this season, but also has some important holes to fill on the field. Regardless, the Seminoles aren't concerned. Everybody talks about like we did lose an alignment and that's the talk every year but we still come out and put thousands of yards up in Russia. We got some young guys that you know they're gonna have to step up just like the, the guys last year stepped up. We've got some other young guys that uh, we're gonna have to fill and replace and, and move on and we've got some talent that we feel like can do that. It'll just be a learning experience. So game one we'll we'll be learning and and hopefully by the end uh, as we're finishing up division we'll be where we want to be and and those guys will be playing the type of football we think they can play. An important key to this year's success is going to be focusing less on the past and more on the present. Last year was last year and it's over with. Uh, we can't lean on that. You know, we're not anymore. We're not North Half contenders. We're this year we're a brand new team. We've taken on a new identity and it'd be really neat to see how that transforms as the year takes off. But, you know, we're playing fast and we're playing physical and that's just been our brand of football. The new season for Smithville begins August 23rd against Belmont and it might be a different team, but it's still Smithville against the world. Just just like last year, we don't want to overlook anybody. We want to take every week seriously, uh, prepare for it, and then we'll move on to the next. We never take anybody lightly. We're trying to get at everybody's head, and no matter what, we know we have each other's back. Reporting in Smithville on the high school football tour, Courtney Robb, WCBI Sports. 60 Schools in 60 Days with Smithville High School was brought to you by Cleveland Moffett Funeral Home and Monroe County Farm Bureau. So we are officially done with the first work week of the high school football tour. For those of you keeping track of the schedule coming up, the Myrtle Hawks are on Saturday, TCPS on Sunday. Myrtle giving us a little bit of a break from Region 2-1A, and then we jump right back in with Knox Pater, uh, TCPS, and Oklahoma. For the full schedule, go to our Twitter and Facebook accounts at WCBI Endzone to see the schedule in its entirety. Victory Christians Michael Tate signs to continue his football career with Delta State. Tate was a dominant force on the field for the Eagles in 2018, averaging almost 13 tackles per game while recording eight sacks in his career. Tate says the recruiting process was, straight, was stressful, but in the end, he's off to go play college football close to home. I was excited for it, so I'm just glad I got to sign because a lot of folks didn't think I would sign. So I'm just glad I got the sign. It's a bliss. I still get to play the sport I love and go to college, get all that done. So it was stressful, but worth it. So big congrats to Michael and best of luck in his football career. That's it for sports. The last look at your forecast coming up next. Watching some clouds and some showers and thunder showers approach the Vernon area. That was our sky came there. You can see that uh, little activity coming on in from the southeast, actually. So a little bit of rain out there this evening. That will go away after sunset. Typical summer weather here. Some spotty showers during the daytime heating. Plenty of heat and humidity. There you go. Enjoy. <laughs> That's it. That's all exactly. I got. That's all I got for you. <laughs> all right. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Have a great night.